morning, everyone. It's time to go on the record. Obviously, none of us are, are, uh, are happy with the, the current numbers in Boston, but it's a process. Boston 2024's revised Olympic plan playing well with the USOC, but not getting wild reviews by some on Beacon Hill. And should the Olympic ballot question be moved up? First thing we owe our customers is service. Unfortunately, sometimes we can't provide that. Trying to get the MBTA and the commuter rail back on track. The state's battle-tested Secretary of Transportation is here. What about fare increases? We'll talk about it. And the Donald is in. Should the other GOP candidates be worried? From WCPB Boston, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Very good morning, everyone, and happy Fourth of July weekend. I'm Ed Harding, along with New Center Five's political reporter Janet Wu. Thank you for joining us on OTR this morning. Our guest is Stephanie Pollock, who has one of the most challenging jobs in the Baker administration. She was tapped by the governor as Secretary of Transportation in January. She is formerly the Associate Director of Northeastern's Dukakis Center for Urban and Regional Policy, and she also consulted for state agencies, Boston and Massport, battle-tested, as I said. Do you feel like you're battle-tested half the time, all the time? You know, 110 inches of snow is a lot. That can get, that can get, <laughs> that can get your attention, right? It, it got all of our attention. Well, thank you for joining us. This well, let's, let's switch and start the uh, conversation off on a summer topic, which is Boston 2024. Uh, they claim their bid is a great incentive to uh, push the state into spending close to $800 million to upgrade and fix not only the red and green line, but also repair two Boston tea stations and overhaul a major artery next to the proposed Olympic Village. Um, do you agree with that? Do you think that's a good, a, a wise way to get that money spent? So we're still looking at the plans like everyone else is. As you know, the governor and the speaker and the Senate president have put together a consulting team, and we're taking a hard look at their recommendations. I think one of the things that the Boston 2024 has pointed out that we absolutely agree with is we're going to have a lot more riders in 2024. Whether we have the Olympics or not, we need to plan for that. We need to make those investments. That doesn't mean we found the money and it's funded, but we need to do it. Whether we also should be making the investments that would support the Olympics specifically as opposed to generally making sure we can accommodate ridership growth, that's what we'll be looking at over the next few weeks. But you know what's needed. Do you think, just off the top of your head, do you think this, these are good investments? The projects that are near the two Olympic venues are actually not projects that have been part of either MassDOT or the T's capital plans to date. So they're new to us and we're going to have to look at them. You're talking about the Olympic Village and the, T and the JFK talking, station. Right, fi fixing K-Circle, uh, adding a new head house at Broadway Station, putting a new commuter rail station on at Whitehead Circle. These are not, these are new ideas, but new ideas are not necessarily bad ideas. They're also not necessarily good ideas. Well, so, so let's go right through the, the rundown that you just talked about. Opponents say that the, this forces the state to prioritize spending that favors Boston over other projects in the state. Is there any merit to that argument? There is a real challenge to making sure that we're spending our money statewide. We just released a one-year capital plan, and I will tell you that just trying to find the resources to make sure that every corner of the state is getting at least some of the, what we need, we, we've been, you know, not keeping keeping our roads and bridges and transit in good shape for decades in Massachusetts. And we have a lot of catching up to do, and we have to do it in a way that's fair to the whole state. So as we go forward and put together a five-year capital plan, of course we have to look at these Olympics ideas, but we have to look at investment everywhere. But it's not going to be a Boston plan. It's going to be a Massachusetts plan. It's got to be a Massachusetts. My plan has to be a Massachusetts plan, and we have to support every city in mm -hmm. town. That includes Boston, but it can't be limited to Boston. Um, switching the conversation to commuter rail, Keolis has said that the summer heat may be just as dangerous as what happened to us during the winter uh, because of the storms, uh, especially when it comes to equi equipment failure. What are you going to do now to prevent a breakdown this summer? So one of the challenges this winter was that there were some new locomotives that the T had bought for Keolis that they hadn't given to Keolis to start using yet, and so we were really short on locomotives all winter. Most of those locomotives are now over at Keolis, and that will help, and the T has been working very closely with Keolis to make sure that things like air conditioning and water and it's kind of all planned for. So I'm hoping that's not the case, but we're, we're, you know, we're all planned for the summer, and honestly, we're already planning for the winter. So you're more planned for summer than you were planned for winter? Yes. I think that that is true beyond any shadow of a doubt, and we will be much more ready for next winter than we were for last winter. Much more ready. Yeah. We, we, what, why, would tonight, it surprise, why would it surprise anyone that there are numbers of inches of snow in this area? So why weren't we ready last year or whatever? So 
I wasn't secretary last year, right. and we didn't sign yeah, the you are now, deal with Keolis. <laughs> and so, you know, we came in in the middle of January, and it started snowing five days before I became secretary, and felt like it never stopped. So, this winter was really in real time operating the system we inherited. Next winter, it's on us, and we know that. And there are already folks taking buses on the orange line, and later this summer on the red line, so that we can put power in place, so that we can put heaters in place, so that we can melt the snow, so that people are not stranded this winter. So let me pick up on what Janet said. If, if, if Boston does get the Olympics in 2024, how much do you think needs to be spent to prevent a major summer meltdown? I mean, that'll be right in the core of the, of the hottest time of the summer season, and you got, you've got millions of visitors descending on Massachusetts for a roughly three-week period. I mean, with or without the Olympics, we're carrying between 1.3 1.4 million people a day on the T. Ten years from now, we could be carrying 1.5, 1.6, 1.7 every day. Mm -hmm. So I'm more worried about the challenge of carrying those folks every day than I am necessarily about two weeks when we're going to have a lot of extra visitors. If we get the Olympics, we'll figure out how to carry the extra visitors. Well, that's my point. If you do have get, if we do get the Summer Olympics, will you have to spend extra money to deal with the fact that there'll be such a log jam on the T, on the commuter rail for three weeks? During the middle, you know, during the time that so again, there, it's real hot. Boston 2024 has provided us with some analysis. Summers are actually a little slower on both the roads and the transit. Their analysis says that when you take that into account, it may not be that bad. We're just beginning to look at that analysis. We'll have a better answer when the Brattle Group report is done in a few weeks. Are you ready for the OTR pop quiz? I am as ready as I'm going. There to you be. see, that's the confidence that we like. Since it's Independence Day weekend, today's OTR pop quiz has a holiday theme. You ready? Question one. How many Massachusetts men signed the Declaration of Independence? I'll give you options. Two, five, or seven? This is a guess, but I'll guess five. You, you guessed correctly. Ding, 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 ding. Question two. We know that John Hancock had the largest signature on the, on the Declaration. Can you name any of the other Bay State signers? I'll, just one. Name one. John Adams. Oh, here you go. Sam Adams, Elbridge Jerry, and, and Robert Treat Payne. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with the, the, the Transportation Secretary. Stay with us.